day, my fellow students. I hope things are going well with you. I trust that the information we have gone through in the past three lessons has changed your way of thinking and that you understand now exactly why we as human beings have to make radical changes to the way we live and to the choices we make on a daily basis in order to live sustainably and provide a future for the next and coming generations. The time is now, and I quote from Himber Delecto, when the soil disappears, the soul disappears. In this lesson, I will be performing my carbon footprint calculation for the year 2009 and 2010 with our built-in online calculator. At the end of the lesson, I would like you to calculate your own for the last year. I know you might not have all your data collected, but that is okay. You can perform as much as your CF with me now and try and get the last few bits of information and then come back to our website and complete the module. If you are unable to get the required information, I would like you to make an accurate guess as to the amount. Just remember, this course is about doing accurate carbon footprint calculations in future, now that you know what information you need to collect and to keep over the year. That way, at the end of next year, your footprint will be accurate. Ready? Let's begin. The carbon calculator that we're going to be using in our training course is on our website eco-training.co.za. You need to register first to be able to get to the calculator. And once you've registered, you can get a user ID and a password. And then you log in. If you click Remember Me, your details will automatically come up. Then under the members area, you will get carbon calculator. Now, if you click once there, you'll go into our carbon calculator. You can tell all your friends and your family to go here and do their carbon footprint. Each country around the world uses different emission factors to calculate a carbon footprint. I live in South Africa, so I'm going to choose South Africa. And I'd like you also to choose the country that you reside in over here. Emissions are usually calculated over a 12-month period, and I'm going to do mine over a period of 12 months, starting on the 1st of July, 2008, and I'm going to end mine on the 30th of June, 2009. Follow my mouse movements, and then you can see how you can select the start and end dates for the period that you want to calculate your carbon footprint for. Once you've done this, click on Save, and now there's two ways to navigate around our calculator. One is at the bottom, and the other one, which we're going to be using in our training course, is the menu items on the top. So the first item we're going to calculate now is my house. So that's why I've clicked on house. The first thing we need to select is how many people live in the house. So because I lived alone, I will select one. The electricity that I used was 9,893 kilowatts. I used no natural gas, no heating oil, or coal. The LPG I used to warm my lounge up was 125 liters. I used no propane, and I used 300 kilograms, or 0.3 tons of wood, to burn in my fires. Then I select Calculate Household Footprint, and I notice this adds up to 9.5 tons. Just below it shows you where all the different amounts come from to add up to the grand total. The next item we're going to calculate is my flights. I went twice to go visit my daughter Jessica in Johannesburg. I left from George, but George did not appear in the From drop-down menu. So because Cape Town is almost the same distance to Johannesburg, I chose Cape Town. When I chose Johannesburg, Central Station was there, but that's a train station. So you need to be careful that you select the right items from these drop-down menus. I took two trips, so I fill in two. And radiator forcing, we're not going to cover in the standard course. We'll cover that in the advanced course. So I'm not going to tick it at the moment. Then we say click to add to footprint. And then we'll notice that these two return trips was 0.51 tons of CO2. So the next one we're going to go to is the car. You can enter details for up to two vehicles here. And I had two cars, so I'm going to enter them both. The vehicle choice is from the EU database and the USA database. You need to wait till select year of manufacture appears before you can select the year. 
So mine was a Land Rover Freelander. So I'm going to select 2005 Land Rover, then Freelander, and mine is the baby of them all, the 1.8 petrol version. The mileage I've traveled, I enter over here. It's 22,400 kilometers that I drove. Then I'm going to, I can see it on the bottom, it's 248 grams per kilo is for my Land Rover Freelander. And calculate an ad shows me 6.39 tons of CO2. Now I'm going to enter my second vehicle. My second vehicle I bought in 2006. It was a brand new Mitsubishi Colt. Now I've looked under the EU car database and the USA car database and it doesn't appear yet. So I phoned the dealership and asked them what the fuel efficiency was on my Mitsubishi. They told me it was 11 liters per 100 kilometers. So you can do the same. You can phone a dealership that sells your type of vehicle and ask in the technical division what the liter per kilometer is. So you can select it down the bottom, liter per kilometer, and you enter your efficiency, 11. Then at the top, you still need to select your mileage. So I drove 31,700 kilometers for the year. I was working quite far from home and I was driving there quite often. Then I click calculate and add to footprint. And you will notice 14.46 tons in total for the vehicles, 639 for the Land Rover and 807 for the Colt. Now I'm going to enter the details for my motorbike. I have a Yamaha 200cc. So under select type, I'm going to select medium motorbike over 125 because mine was a 200cc. The efficiency is 106 grams per kilometer. And the mileage I traveled was 1,700 for the year. So I type that in, I click calculate and add, and I will notice 0.21 tons for the motorbike. I want you to type maps.brabies.com in your internet web browser, and then press enter. Look for distance calculator, so that we can calculate how far it was by road to go from George to Belleville. And then we can multiply it by 4, because I went there and back twice. So starting address is George, end address is Belleville, and then we click on Search. And it will give you a couple of options, and choose your best option. In my case, I was lucky it was the first two, which is George Western Cape and Belleville Western Cape. And then it will automatically tell you how much the distance was. So my distance was 487 kilometers. Public transportation. I didn't travel by bus. We don't really have many buses in this area. The coach I traveled was from George to Belleville, twice. So I type in 1952 with the calculator. No rail, no tram, no tube. But I did travel a little bit in the taxi, let's say 400 kilometers. I think that's a good guess. And then we choose calculate. And you see it's 0.12 for the rail and bus footprint. We are now at the last part of our carbon calculation. Secondary emissions. This is more about the food we eat, the way we live, the way we spend our spare time and what we spend our money on. Under food preferences, I basically ate red meat every day. So I had to select I eat red meat every day. Organic produce. I was organic. I didn't really know about organic. So I never, um, I never bought it or I didn't know what I wanted to buy. So I select that one. In season, I didn't know it made a great difference to buy in season and out season. But then I was buying oranges and grapes and everything at the wrong season. So I didn't try to buy or grow in season. Imported food and goods. I was also not aware of the carbon footprint of trucks and refrigeration and storage and things like that. And flights even to get out of season stuff to our supermarkets. So I ticked, I didn't notice where goods came from. I just bought anything that I felt like eating. I also regularly shopped for the latest fashions, not taking into consideration how much it takes to make all these clothes and the emissions that are emitted by the factories that make them. I also just like nice packages. If something was in a nice box with a ribbon or you could see the things inside, that's the package I went for and that's the product I went for. I had to have the latest TV, flat screens, 
the new telephones, cameras, radios in the cars. I was buying a lot, a lot of the latest technology. Recycling? Well, luckily, I uh, spent some time in Australia in the early 2000s, and there there's a lot of recycling. So I learned how to recycle there, only with the garbage. So some of my waste was recycled. A little gold star for me there. <laughs> The recreation, well, I went skydiving and jumping and riding in boats and everything, so I enjoyed carbon-intensive activities for that period. I had two cars. I had all the bells and whistles, credit cards, overdrafts, lots of home loans, so I used a lot of financial services. So you see, the total of my secondary emissions is 12.66 tons, which is very, very high if you compare it to the rest of my footprint. Okay, we're done. We click on results. We scroll up to the top of the page. And we notice that my carbon footprint is 37.46 tons. That is a lot. Considering the country average, the footprint there looks very small. A lot of it went on to my house, my car, and my lifestyle and the food that I ate. The secondary emissions we just calculated. So, if I can reduce in my house or on the amount of kilometers that I drive in my car and try and drive more on my bike, and my secondary emissions, if I don't buy all the latest things, I might be able to drop the amount of carbon I'm spewing into the air every year. Look at the world target. The world target is nice and low. Let's achieve this. Once you have calculated your carbon footprint, you can offset your emissions by projects like planting trees in your area. We'll cover that later in our advanced course. So this is not part of the course, clicking offset now. These are the global averages, and if you share your computer with somebody else, or you're in an internet shop, or you want to redo your carbon footprint, you can click there. Now that I have calculated my footprint for the year 2009, I'm going to take a screenshot of the results and save it to my Eco Analysts folder on my computer. Before we wrote this training module, I gathered all the information I require in order to perform another calculation based on my 2010 data. Let me go through it with you now. I've now gathered all the information that I need to complete my second carbon footprint calculation. Go to the carbon footprint calculator on the Eco Training website. Make sure the country is the country that you reside in, in my case, South Africa. And then I'm going to start mine 1st of July 2009 until the 30th of June 2010. Then I must click Save. And the first calculation I'm going to do is that for my house. In my 2010 carbon footprint calculation, I still lived in the same house, but my girlfriend moved in. And I did a lot of things around the house. I changed to low energy light bulbs. I put a geyser blanket and a geyser timer on. Set the pool pump. And I burnt a lot more wood in my fireplace. So I used a lot less LPG gas to heat the lounge. But my wooden pellets shot up. But that's okay because I was getting rid of the alien vegetation in the area. You can see now my carbon footprint for my house is now 2.34 tons. In my 2009 footprint, I went to go see Jessica in Johannesburg twice, by aeroplane. But in 2010, I decided to go by car. So my flights are zero. In April of 2009, I sold my Colt Bucky. It was a 2 liter, and I decided to buy a Honda Civic, which is a 1400 petrol. But the efficiency is a lot greater. I also bought a 125cc motorbike. A little runaround with no gears. Everything is relatively close by in this area, so I use that to get to and from Francis' house for the videography and to Neisner to go and talk to Wayne or to Nibby. The mileage in my cars has dropped considerably since that. I don't do long distances so much anymore. I don't travel just for fun. If I do, I go on one of the motorbikes. I've now added my Land Rover. My Honda is a 1999, but that doesn't appear on the list, and one year is not such a great big difference. So I'll select 2000, and then Honda Civic 3-door, 
and mine is the 1400 and you'll see that the grams per kilometer it's very light it's a lot lighter than the cold bucket 183 the mileage I also reduced a lot of my mileage so when we come to get the total of my car footprint we click on calculate and add to footprint you'll see now the total has dropped to 3.97 from my previous value when I looked at my carbon footprint results for 2009 and I was wondering of ways to reduce that I decided to ride around a lot less in my cars and more on my motorbikes now I'm putting in the details for my 200cc Yamaha I had 2100 kilometers for the year click on calculate and add to footprint then I can select from the drop down list my 125cc scooter you see the efficiency it's very very good I traveled 1380 kilometers I click on calculate and add to footprint and I can see the total kilometers that I did ends up with a low footprint value my bus and rail are all zeros I didn't take the coach to Cape Town and I didn't take any taxis so it will remain zero tons let's move on now to secondary and look how I changed my lifestyle to reduce my carbon footprint I don't eat as much red meat anymore I eat mostly white meat these days the organic produce well I know what organic means now and some of the food I buy is organic in season food this I know all about now and I only buy in season food when I go to the supermarket I mostly buy local produce there's a shop in the area that gathers from the local farms I only buy clothes when I need them and I'm not interested in packaging at all anymore my furniture I haven't bought anything nothing so I'm gonna use it until it runs out I recycle everything these days I've got a worm farm the recreation well I've stopped doing all the radical sports and cars unfortunately I still have two cars but I use them a very little I mostly go on my motorbikes and I don't have any banking nothing I've only got a current account that's all let's have a look how that's Wow 3.81 now only that's excellent I can't wait to see what my carbon footprint is like for 2010 I've got such a low secondary footprint let's not click on offset now and if you want to redo your secondaries just click once and remove okay let's see the results 10.52 that's fantastic look how much my house has dropped my flights are down to zero my cars have really dropped that's because I'm riding my motorbike so often now my motorbikes have only gone up a little bit and I'm riding them a lot the bus and rail that's on zero and my secondary because I've changed my lifestyle look at that secondary three point I'm sure this is around about 60 or 70 percent reduction since my 2009 carbon footprint that's really really good that's really good 10.52 let's have a look at the global averages the South African is 9.2 tons the worldwide is four Ooh, I've still got a long way to go so you can click on clear and you can start again if you like thank you for this that is a reduction of over 70 percent I would like you all to do your calculation now and save the results for the next lesson through energy use the average home emits more harmful CO2 gases than the average car that's probably because at home your battery doesn't run flat if you leave the lights on until our final lesson where you will get your certificate and I will discuss with you how I managed to reduce my emissions by so much and what you can do to reduce yours I'm really looking forward until the next time keep cool and help avoid global warming